All right, uh, let's get started now. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, my name is Mike Smelter. I'm an independent consultant from uh, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Um, that's on the east coast of Canada, for those of you who don't know. And I'm here to talk to you today about uh, a control panel called Shine. It's a replacement for uh, the native control bar experience in DNN 7 and 8 and the persona bar in DNN 9. Uh, thank you to all our sponsors. Uh, without them, obviously, we won't uh, have this conference. And without you guys coming here, we wouldn't have it either. So thank you. We have an agenda for today. We're just going to talk briefly about who I am, uh, what is the product of it called Shine, what are the goals of it. I'm going to do a high-level demonstration of it, and then talk about next steps, uh, where I'm going with it, and an opportunity to ask some questions. By all means, though, it's a small group, so if I'm presenting something and there's a question, just, just spit it out, and if it's uh, something I think will take too long, we'll just leave it to the end, but if not, we'll just answer right there. Uh, so as I said, yeah, I'm Mike Smelter from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, I work as an independent consultant. What that means, uh, basically, is I take on contract work uh, for clients both in Canada and have a few international clients as well. Um, mainly focused lately on .NET Nuke. Um, been using .NET Nuke f since 2011. Would have started in uh, Dean and 5. Uh, haven't participated much in the community, though. Uh, so this is um, my first kind of public product I've been uh, working on. Everything else is just custom development work for clients, usually. Uh, Majority is definitely a .NET space, .NET Nuke uh, being one of them, but I also do things uh, on other CMSs. I've used WordPress and Drupal, uh, a lot of, I, I know, <laughs> a lot of back-end uh, integration work connecting uh, .NET apps to uh, back office building systems, that type of thing. Um, lifelong developer, uh, I've been professionally programming for about 10 or 11 years now, uh, but I've been programming since uh, late 1980s. I remember uh, my father bringing home a QBasic book, uh, and you type, uh, you type the lines and you get a video game. Uh, so that's how I started uh, learning, and then moved into VB, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, onto .NET and onto web development. Um, also do some Java work and that type of thing in the past as well. Uh, most of my uh, clients I've focused on are larger enterprise customers, um, which has been great for me, because then I get to see a lot of um, a lot of ways people work operationally in, the, in these companies. Um, what I've, my, or at least in my experience, a lot of agencies I've worked with will, you know, ship a product and see a later type thing, or you know, they don't use it every day unless someone calls them. And the way people operate, uh, at least my experience with their, with the CMS, especially in a larger company where you have more than one person maintaining it, there's a lot of different use cases that come up. So uh, work with that type of clients, give me some exposure to that. I've done that both uh, as full-time employment before moving on to my own. Uh, I've also worked on project work as well. Um, so I've got a good, a good mixture of things which I try to incorporate into this tool. So what is Shine? Shine is, if you're in the um, last session by Ash Prasad, he talked about uh, the persona bar a little bit. And uh, there was a question regarding that saying, oh, you could, you could change it. So in .NET Nuke, at least in DNN 9, you know, the persona bar, it's, it's just an extension in .NET Nuke. In 7 and 8, it's called the control bar. It's just an extension in .NET Nuke. Those ones just happen to be the default experience. Um, so you can write a, a .NET Nuke extension. Um, there's a couple settings behind the scenes that you have to change, but you can swap in and out the control panels. Uh, so that, that's what this is basically. Um, what I'm trying to strive here for is a familiar experience to those who've used DNN 7, DNN 8, uh, but also diversified a little bit. So what I'm trying to get at here is I want people to use it, know right away you know, what's going on if they're familiar with .NET Nuke. And for those who aren't familiar with .NET Nuke, really simplify the interface. Uh, the default uh, administrative interface has tons of options. It's because .NET Nuke has you know, tons of stuff behind the scenes. Um, that's great for some people. Um, I like to tinker with stuff, but for, at least for my clients, you know, they really need a, a targeted, straightforward approach to editing content. And once you start adding in a lot of other stuff, it clutters the experience and uh, really becomes frustrating. And then in some cases, you end up, you know, multiple different ways to do the same thing. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is be familiar, but reduce a lot of the more advanced features uh, from the UI, or at least the things that you may set up once or twice and not go back and use again. Um, there's no reason, at least uh, in my opinion, why that should be always in the front. Um, another big thing is contextual information, no guessing. 
So something I've run into a lot is there's a lot, as I mentioned, going behind the scenes in .NET Nuke. Um, it doesn't always tell you what's happening, though. If you rename a page in .NET Nuke, you get a redirect created automatically from the old page name. But it doesn't tell you that. So there's a lot of examples like that where it may do something. You don't know about it unless, uh, you know, unless you're really skilled uh, with, with .NET Nuke. Add that up over time, over weeks, months, years on a site, and you get a lot, of, a lot of bloat behind the scenes you had no idea existed. So what we're trying to do is, no matter what we're doing in this experience, telling you what's happening. Uh, so in, in that case, if we renamed a page, we want to tell you, hey, I renamed the page for you, but I also created a redirect from the old page name. Um, that's good functionality if you know what's happening. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I may edit a page a dozen times before it goes live. Now do I have, uh, you know, indecisive, uh, I was indecisive, I changed the page name, so now I have 12 redirects that were not even applicable in real life uh, because the page wasn't live. So trying to show this stuff, provide input all the time. Uh, another good example, I think, is at just simply as adding a module to a page. If you uh, do that on a big site, or uh, if it's slow, or you, you know, went, grabbed a coffee, came back, you drag and drop the module, the page could spin and spin and spin for 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds. It doesn't tell you what's, what's happening at all. There's no visual indicators. So for someone who's impatient or just doesn't know, they may start clicking around, uh, thinking the system froze. So in that case, we're, we're telling you right away, hey, we're adding module to the page. It's going to take a few minutes, and it's going to re, uh, refresh the page for you afterwards. Uh, so we're trying to, those are just two examples. I'm trying to basically use that as a kind of a guiding principle. So everything we do in here, I want to, uh, or build in this application, want to tell everyone what's going on. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of good tools out there already that do a lot of administrative tasks. Um, we're not trying to rebuild uh, all of the admin experience in .NET Nuke. Uh, what we're trying to do is just focus on a couple core areas and then all the other administrative work um, in DNN 7 8 to be all the admin pages and host pages. That is all incorporated uh, with this. And in DNN 9, I don't have it for this demonstration, unfortunately, um, but we are going to be loading the Persona Bar extensions into this control panel. So all of the work that's been done there on the core product and then the third-party extensions, they'll continue to work on this as well. Uh, they just might look a little different, and you might get to them a little different way. And it's in development. So uh, I've been actually working on this for almost three years. Um, I started it a couple of years ago because of frustrations that myself and my clients were having. Then I noticed, uh, I was telling a few people last night this story, um, I noticed that at one of these events, uh, there's another control panel that was presented, and I said, oh geez, I already started this, someone else is ahead of me now, and it kind of got a little discouraged, so I, I put it on pause. Then I picked it back up again, DNA 9 comes out, okay, someone else started uh, trying to uh, do what I, what I was doing. So I got a little discouraged again. Um, especially since that was in the core product. I thought you know, there'd be more push to, over the last, I think it's been for two years almost now, to really uh, continue working on that. Um, but then I, I started thinking, you know what? It's good to have d diversification. Um, there's not many products, uh, free or paid, in the control panel, sp control panel space in .NET Nuke. There's the core one, there's Evoke, um, and I think there's, at least that I know of, like one or two others, uh, which, there was the one I mentioned from, from DNX a few years ago, and then you know, the, the previous versions. So there's not a whole lot of stock. Uh, so, yeah, that's what it is. Um, in development, yes, as, as I mentioned, it's still there. There's a public preview online right now. Uh, we can go and try this out on a website, and I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, I think it's probably going to be about three months or so before I actually get an official, you know, here's a, here's a product you could use in production. So right now, I'm showing you this test software. It does work. Um, it's polished in a few areas, but it's just not ready yet to run on a client's website. So bugs, uh, bugs absolutely do exist. Um, the goal of this is, is kind of what I was playing on a minute ago, is just to provide a new and unique experience for people and enhance the common tasks on .NET Nuke. Um, really, I am focusing a lot on the day-to-day -day users here. Uh, I work a lot with marketing teams and uh, I don't want to say non-technical users, but, but users who are not developers. And uh, e even developers, I'm a developer. Um, I like things, personally, I like things pretty. I like it seamless. I like the things I'm using to just work. Um, but daily basis, people are doing things like creating pages, uploading files, 
Um, some of my clients, lots of redirects and vanity URLs are being created every day uh, for campaigns and other purposes. So really focusing on, okay, the administration of files, pages and redirects, and then just adding content to pages. Um, everything else behind the scenes is absolutely important, but for a lot of my clients, um, and then for myself, you know, just the simple stuff up front on a daily basis, and uh, really trying to enhance that type of stuff. Um, I, I don't like the word enterprise, that's why I have in quotes there. There's a lot of things that um, I find that uh, my enterprise clients, my larger clients use, which small businesses actually really should have, in my opinion. It shouldn't be um, something as simple as versioning a file. When I upload a file in the file manager, if someone makes a mistake and overwrites it, there's no way to go back easily uh, in DNN. I don't think that should be a, an enterprise feature. Uh, that should be a general feature of using any CMS, in my opinion. Um, so stuff like that I'm trying to bring into this product, uh, which I think many people could benefit from. Another thing, uh, transparency to all stakeholders. I've worked with teams uh, upwards of 24, uh, operation, oh, 24 people in the operational size that work on uh, .NUC websites. And a lot of times, in my experience at least, you know, I have a development team over here doing work, I have marketers over here, and there's, you know, there has to be trust for working with each other, but maybe the development team creates a redirect in the web config, maybe they do it um, by going to the page settings and changing that link URL section, maybe they do it through the tabs URL table, or they put it on uh, another network appliance in front of it, but the actual stakeholder of that website who's in there every day, they don't know all that stuff, they only see what's in .NUC. So another thing we're trying to do here is take um, redirects as an example. I'm trying to take all the sources of redirects and bring them into the UI. So I can see, as, a, as, a, as an order of my website, I can see that you know, there's, there's 100 redirects in the web config, and oh, I know why they were there. Or I can see something like, what is that? And, and ask a question and start the conversation with people. Uh, why did you do this? So, Trying to bring uh, a lot of transparency to everyone so there's no, no hidden stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, another thing I'm working on um, is a, a passive recommendations engine. So I'll show this in the demo a little bit, but there's a lot of tools out there that scan your website uh, to tell you what's wrong with it. All of them, uh, at least that I've come across, uh, really exist outside of your DNN website. So I'm trying to bring um, more analytics and recommendations into the experience for .NET Nuke specific things. So we talk about uh, best practices, both in .NET Nuke, web development, system administration, security, um, and all these scattered tools out here. So why not actually kind of bring that logic into the application and uh, be able to, to show uh, recommendations to people? It's, uh, it's, it's passive because sometimes there's things set up to make your site work and you know, people do workarounds or shortcuts or interesting things, um, so I don't want to actually just eliminate that type of um, stuff from happening, but bringing it to the forefront and saying, hey, look, you know, there's an issue on this page. You probably should go fix it. You don't have to, though, but at least bring that information up. And then also that kind of informs your stakeholders a little bit so that they know that there's problems on their site which should generate more work uh, for people that are maintaining their website or you know, unfortunately, it gives them the opportunity to question, okay, I just paid someone, you know, $15,000 for this website, why do I see that this tool says there's 500 issues with it? Um, and, you know, start, uh, start trying to more, more transparency. And uh, I think combining all this stuff together will, will help me uh, and hopefully uh, other people use this tool, you know, build better websites. Um, at the end of the day, it could be the, the most secure, performant, um, best practice uh, implemented website around, but uh, if you ship it to your clients and they don't like the interface, they don't like how they're used on a daily basis, they don't think it's that good. Uh, so I think kind of combining all this together uh, will, will help us all build, uh, build better websites. Sorry about that. Uh, the other thing I, I don't uh, have listed here, but um, I think it's important, um, is documentation. Um, we all, it's kind of a love-hate world. You know, everyone uh, hates writing documentation. Uh, not everyone, uh, but a lot of people do, and a lot of people hate going to find it in some cases until something happens, and they, okay, where's the documentation? Why did someone do this? Uh, where's the decision-making here? 
So we're also augmenting, um, I'm trying to add this to everything I, I do in the control panel. So the sections where you can add context specific notes and information. So a good example with that would be, um, I've seen people put notes on pages, right? Um, someone put a bunch of CSS and JavaScript inside a module header because they didn't want to either go through the process of updating their skin or module, they just want a quick workaround to get a page running and out the door. But the next person that goes to look at that page has no idea that it's there. Um, so we've had the ability that someone can add a note to a page. So kind of like, uh, like a check-in comment on code, also doing that on files, also doing that on redirects. Uh, so in a corporate environment, um, lots of people have ticketing systems. So you can put a ticket number, you know, this is why I added this redirect, or uh, I added a vanity URL for a campaign. Um, we all, uh, at, least, at least myself, um, people I work with, um, when you're doing something, it's, it's in your mind, but you know, a month, two weeks, two years, 10 years down the road, there's all this stuff there, and a lot of times you don't know why you did it, or you have, to yeah. Absolutely. So that, that's actually one of the things I was thinking about. Um, there's a subject and there's a note. So a subject could be for your client, like how to edit this web page, or uh, you know here's something in particular, and then you can put a whole uh, bunch of documentation. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what exactly what I'm getting at. I've seen people use HTML modules or put it uh, put notes in the uh, module title and then have like the display can hit, right? So you get all this stuff, I'm trying to do it in a more consistent way that's off the pages. It does work. Uh, yes, you can use permissions, but you're adding modules to pages just for, you know what I mean? It bloats them up a little bit. Um, all right, so let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's start looking at it. And once again, if there's any questions as I'm going through this, just, just spit them out and uh, we'll, we'll tackle them. So what we're looking at here is just a DNN default website. Uh, the, I think it's the, yeah, the default website template uh, when you install. And it's version, I think this one's 804 that, that we're running on. Uh, if you look at the top of the screen up here, I'm just gonna, there we go. It's, very similar to what you'd see in DNN 7 and 8. Same position, exact same height as well. Um, on the right hand side, we have the edit, toggle edit mode, and we have the ability to go into the per current page settings. Very, very similar location. Um, on the left hand side here, we have a dashboard. So this is uh, some new functionality I'm, I'm adding. We have the uh, ability to go to quick, uh, quick pages. So in DNN uh, 7 and 8, you can actually bookmark in the control panel an admin or host page and kind of bring it to the top of the list. Uh, but what about pages that don't live in there? Uh, ones if you put it somewhere else. This functionality gives us the ability to basically bookmark any page in your site and bring it right into the control panel. Uh, then there's a file and folder manager and then a pages and redirects uh, section. Um, before we get into those, I'll talk about edit mode a little bit. So I, I'm in view mode right now. And just quickly toggle back. And the one thing you'll notice right away, it's a little different than standard uh, DNN, is we have all these pluses. And what we've done here is kind of combined layout mode and edit mode in one. So every content pane in your skin will have one of these bars auto automatically added into it. Doesn't matter what skin, it just kind of dynamically reads it, loads them. If that content pane has content in it, like this one, it will then add another uh, two, one above the module, one below. So no matter where you are on this page, you can always see exactly the only spots where you can add any type of content. Um, so this eliminates, uh, actually I'll, I'll just show you here. So let's choose this one. And this slides in and gives you the ability to choose what module uh, that you want to add to that spot. So eliminating the, the kind of drag and drop functionality. Um, a couple use cases for that would be, you know, this is more touch friendly. So everything in this control panel is built to be uh, responsive uh, and mobile friendly. So as you can see there, everything kind of just shrinks uh, as you'd expect in, in an application. So 
I use my Surface Pro 4 a lot. I, I touch the screen all the time. Uh, I find this is quite helpful for that. Um, it also, unless you go in layout mode or you start dragging your modules around, you don't know where you can put stuff. Uh, so right away, it just kind of eliminates the guesswork and shows someone who's not familiar with a, a theme, um, you know, where you can where you can add stuff. It's uh, not 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 a big deal to go in edit mode or layout mode and move things around, but it just eliminates another step for for users. Uh, let's go ahead here and just add something. Add the HTML module. Um, the other thing I've actually done here too is when you expand these, if you don't know what these modules are, it pulls in the help uh, or the description from the manifest. Um, so some of the HTML that's pretty self-explanatory, but if you had a custom module, uh, this is assuming the developer added notes to it, uh, it would pull them directly in here and help you out a little bit. And click add. Uh, this was actually, uh, I've done this presentation a couple times, <laughs> thank you, uh, over the last uh, couple months, and uh, one of my, uh, one, one of the audience asked me some questions about adding module, and they said the one thing that they miss the most from earlier versions of .NET Nuke is the ability to add a name to the module. Um, I find on a daily basis that people just don't do it because you have to go into the settings screen and, and drill down, which is fine in some cases, but you know if you have a website with lots of content on it and you've deleted modules over the years, go to the recycle bin and try and find what you're looking for when you've got 150 HTML modules with no names on it, it gets a little frustrating or if you're sharing a module from another page, uh, there's a lot of guesswork involved. So right away we're giving you, it's, it's optional, uh, of course, but uh, you can give a, a name to the module. And as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to, it was quite quick now because we're active, but uh, if that had taken a while, that message that said adding module to page, it would have stayed there until the page refreshed. Uh, that way your users know exactly what's going on. Um, but yeah, there's, there's the module there. Other thing we'll look at is the settings screen. So this is, this is sort of similar to what's in DNN, but we're trying to um, not show you everything, and we're trying to bring some more um, contextually aware information to the page. Um, so this is, as mentioned, this is all in development. Some of these screens are a little more finished than others. This one still has a good little bit of work left on it, so it's gonna evolve a bit. Uh, but right now you get the name of the page at the top, the current URL, and some quick actions. So this is the home page. If it wasn't, it would say delete page here as well. Uh, but I can unpublish it, or that would publish it if it was, uh, if it was unpublished. This section here, I'll show you this uh, working in a few minutes. Uh, we're, there's a, in a settings screen, you can actually add in your Google Analytics information. So this will, in real time, pull in uh, page views and things like that into the screen. So I know for myself, I hate having to log into different systems, um, and especially you know, if I'm building something for a, um, a non-technical type user, uh, someone who just wants to edit their website, know what's going on, they can go to the page, open up the page settings, and see right away how many people have uh, visited the page uh, from Google Analytics. Um, here's that note section that I was mentioning earlier. Um, so I've added a note, uh, what was that, two days ago? And you know, thank you for coming. Um, this is gonna expand a little bit. Right now, it just, it's plain text. Uh, I'm gonna have a rich text editor in here that just allows people to bold stuff, add links, and a few other things for formatting. And um, it's f the full audit trail. It keeps uh, track of the name of who used it and the date and time. Um, I believe off the top of my head, I create a separate copy of the name. So if someone deletes a user, you won't get uh, an error message or something like that, uh, or uh, you know, this user doesn't exist. Um, so we're grabbing, I think it's the display name, and just kind of saving a copy with the note. Uh, down here at the bottom, you can still get to your default DNN settings page. Um, you know, for existing sites that have uh, you know, cache settings set up or other types of behavior, uh, we still need to get to it. You can get to it from there. Sure. Oh, you mean down here? No, on the top. Oh, uh, okay. So you could, if you use the messaging of, of a DNN social, for instance, mm -hmm. it would be nice to contact the super users by clicking. Gotcha. Nice. Gotcha. The reason why, um, so I'll mention this now. I'm trying to use everything in this is, is DNN based. Um, I didn't want to use messaging 
because I wasn't sure if other solutions would use it, what that would do to kind of the overall flow I'm looking for here. So would my messages go somewhere else and someone else's modules activate them? Um, so a, I can do some investigation. So like, right, that you could, uh, I don't know, uh, have a link to, because there could be a name there, but you could link, who's that? It could be a link to the profile page. Uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's a, good, uh, that's a good feedback. Thank you, appreciate it. The other options here is we have a recycle bin on the page itself. Um, so if you want to restore a module from a particular page, you don't go to the admin pa uh, page and sort through a big list of all the pages. Go to the page in particular, open up the recycle bin, and it will give you modules that are deleted just on this page. Uh, and you can restore them right from here. Once again, we're telling people that, hey, it's gonna refresh the page in a minute, don't go anywhere. And uh, that module, I believe, is right here. There we go. And this is a pared down settings screen. Um, right now, there's a few other things that we're gonna add here, but it's getting close to feature complete. So once again, I'm looking, I know there's settings that, that we set up and that are important, but they're not important on an everyday basis, some of these things. So I'm trying to put in here only things that our users, our clients actually might change uh, more than just once. So the page name, uh, the parent page, so where it exists in the site hierarchy, uh, the theme, if it's a navigation or not, and if you want it to, to be indexed by a search engine or not. Uh, every, uh, every field in this app, I'm trying to bring in um, relevant information in the form of tool tips. Uh, as you can see here, this isn't relevant at all, because uh, it's still in development, it's just uh, copy and pasted a few things, but this is gonna have more end user friendly messaging, and even uh, maybe some helpful tips to say things like, you know, for the page name, yes, it's the name of your page, but what's the kind of industry best practice for naming pages? Is there a length? Um, is there you know, specific terms that we should have in our page titles? That type of thing. So bring more documentation into the experience. Um, metadata, right now, just the meta description and keywords. This section is going to be, over the next couple of weeks, growing a little bit to have more things like uh, open graph meta information. Uh, so other sources, other types of meta tags that people actually might want to use and, and bring them in here. And the URLs screen, this will show us all the URLs that are on this page. Uh, here's the current one right here, but then you can also go in and add, um, now let's do this, and then choose if it's a 301 or a 302. I believe that in Dina 9 this functionality is in the UI. On 7 and 8 I don't think it is. Um, but it does, it works behind the scenes. And then the scheduled publishing, uh, th this was actually another feature request from that same, uh, from that same meeting I would have had there a few weeks ago. Um, pretty simple stuff, you can enable scheduling and then choose um, the date and time. One thing I did notice, which I wasn't uh, aware of, because I haven't used this option that much, um, I have a few people that are doing the testing on this for me that are not like DNN, people, which, which is perfect for me. Um, they set a publishing date and time, went away for five, 10 minutes, whatever it was, came back, the page wasn't showing up. Uh, because your page actually has to have your all users uh, view turned on on the page permissions. So you create a page by default, you don't go into the permissions screen, and you set a publishing date, well your page isn't going live. Uh, so this will actually do that for you. Um, there's, the information's not there yet in the pop-up, but when you save it, it's gonna know that if your page doesn't have all users set, it's gonna set it and it's gonna tell you that, hey, you enabled uh, publishing or scheduled publishing. To make this work, we made the all users flag set to true. The dashboard here, um, this is configurable so that it will open automatic, oh, go ahead. No, yeah, keep going. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here we go. So your page permissions are here. Yeah, it looks uh, just like it would in seven and eight, uh, and nine, I believe. Um, just straightforward, it'll load in your permission keys, users and roles. Yeah, so it's still there. Last word. Hmm? Um, when you use this publishing function. Yes.
Okay. Uh, I, I don't use this this checkbox. Okay. Yeah, so, so right now, that, that's an awesome use case, which I didn't even think about, to be honest. Um, so right now, it, would, it doesn't give you the option. Yeah. Uh, it would just do it. So that, 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 that's some great feedback. And I'll, uh, I'll look to include something like that where um, you know, maybe it gives it an optional. Uh, do you want to add all users or, or another role or none at all? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. It's the server time right now. Yeah. Yes, I've run into that as well. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I believe it's the server time. Um, my my t the person that's been doing the testing ran into that and they're like, okay, the times don't match up here to what my time is. So there's some work that I have to do there for sure to do more localization on the times. Yeah. The dashboard here, um, you can have this open up automatically when you log in if you like, uh, you d or you don't have to. And up here, there's a notification section. Right now, there's just a static notification that's reinforcing uh, my point that this is still in development. Uh, so if you download this and, and try it out, uh, just try it on your test site. Don't put it in production because uh, it won't be ready for a couple more months. Uh, but other notifications will start showing up here. Um, if you work on a site with many content editors and maybe you don't log in for a month, this might tell you that, hey, Mike created 10 pages while you were gone. Um, or someone left some notes on a page. Click here to go view them. So just bringing some more information, some more awareness to, to your daily life. Um, another thing is insights. This is that, I'm calling it insights for now. Uh, this is that passive recommendations engine I was talking about. So this is currently in demo mode right now. It's not actually going to scan your site in particular um, for another couple weeks or a month or so in the next release. But I'll give you a, a little demonstration of what it's going to look like. Um, at least in the first stage. So in this case, we're getting page descriptions. You know, you're missing them. If you click into view, right now there's just another coming soon uh, message, but you'll get a pop-up that basically gives all the pages and a link to go drill into them. Uh, same thing with accessibility issues, what pages or, or where are the, the issues at. The thing that uh, I think really differenti differenti will, will differentiate this from a third-party program is that this runs in .NET Nuke, and I know .NET Nuke. So I'm able to actually say, the issue isn't just on this page, but it's in this module. And here's how you go change it. Um, I've been thinking about things like, well, HTML module, um, I don't like them, but they're everywhere. And you have full control, so it's easy to change. But maybe it's a module uh, that you can update. So maybe give some more information around the modules to say, you know, here's the issue, uh, but you can't change it because it's not in a spot of, uh, it's, in hard, it's hard code in the module, right? What is the standard that you're using for accessibility? Is it time issue? Sure. Uh, yep, uh, so 2.0 is what I'm looking at. 2.1 is coming out, I think, in a couple months, uh, which is going to change around a few things. So that, that's what I'm trying to target for accessibility. Yep. Uh, actually, the, the user um, that, that's testing this for me uh, has, uh, has vision issues. Uh, so it's been very helpful to, uh, you know, yes, I hear all the talks about accessibility, that type of thing. I believe it's important for sure, but I don't have firsthand experience with a lot of this. And to see someone actually do QA uh, on a product that does, uh, she, she lost her mouse uh, a couple weeks ago. And, and for me, it's like, it's right there. But got really frustrated by it. So a lot of the color schemes and things that I'm doing um, are just trying to be plain, uh, not uh, nice contrasting colors, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, broken page HTML. So did someone miss a slash or not close the div tag, that type of thing? Uh, SEO recommendations, uh, settings in .NET Nuke as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's not really any way um, I can think of where a third party can tell you if you've actually configured a, a proper 404 page. Um, it could probably tell you if you got a 200 HTTP request or a response and there's something there. But here I can actually say you didn't change that DNN setting. Um, so things like the 404 page, the 500 page, is this application running in debug mode still? You can't really find that out from outside, only from inside. Uh, so we're trying to go, this isn't gonna replace some really specialized software, but it, it's trying to be a, a, a generalist. You know, a lot of the main stuff that we know about, why not bring it up in here? Um, whether it's programming related, DNN related, uh, or best practices. 
Uh, poor file names is actually another great one. So we talk about accessibility a lot. At least in my experience, people focus on web pages. Uh, files that you upload to your website absolutely have to be accessible as well. PDF documents, uh, a lot of those times they're uploaded. Um, we have recommendations for the page names, so why not give recommendations for the files you upload as well? I've seen some really terrible file names with space, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, this will uh, try and prevent that a bit. And another one here, this is more for kind of an operational type environment, uh, but it will kind of give you a snapshot of how many issues you've had over the last couple weeks and months uh, in your site so you know if it's getting worse or getting better. It's also customizable. So right now, um, I'm calling these widgets. Um, right now I only have four in here and they're Google Analytics related. But you'll be able to, uh, there's, a, there's actually a, about two dozen or so I've defined of these widgets that I'm gonna have in here. And uh, some are analytics related, some are for third party modules. Um, there's a few modules I use that uh, users can fill in form, uh, but I can't, find that data unless I go to the page that the form's on, go into the edit screen and see the data. Uh, why not pull that up to the front here? If it doesn't send me an email alert or something else, I would have no idea uh, that the data's there unless you drill down. So trying to bring as much information, you know, be, be transparent, bring it all up to the front for relevant things like that. Let's go ahead and add uh, some of these analytic widgets. After you press save, it tells us it was successful and a quick refresh, and it's down here. Okay, so it's there, but it doesn't work. So let's go into the settings up here. And right in here, I can add in the JSON private key and the view ID. This is uh, the view ID, uh, for those who don't know, it's um, inside Google Analytics and basically identifies the, the property, I believe. And the JSON private key in Google Analytics you can set up, um, I think the Google Analytics and, and Google uh, developer API section, there is a report, a Google Analytics reporting integration you can create and it will generate a key for you. So let's go ahead and add one I've pre-generated here. Will this also work for Google Tag Manager? Yes, it will. Right. So I'll throw that in. <laughs> My displays are uh, a little extended here. Okay, those have been saved. So assume I didn't co copy in garbage, it should work. So there we go, it shows the, the widgets I've added. Uh, if I took one off, it just takes it away from the list. So there it is there. Um, so today, no, one, no one's been to uh, this demo site today. I'm um, hoping that uh, these, this count will go up a little bit later today, and if it did, it would show up here. Uh, but let's just choose the last 30 days. And there's uh, 24 people, that's a 12 to 12, that's good. Um, so 24 people have come to this demo site uh, in the last uh, 30 days and used it. Top pages, no visitors today, so let's do 30 again. So the home page, um, the login pages as well. So no one's really navigated around, uh, just sat on the home page. And you can see where they, where they come from as well. Uh, as I mentioned, this is like, these are, uh, yeah, so for my website, I have a blog post on this as well. So people come from my website and direct. Um, this is just a real small subset of what I'd call uh, like vanity analytics. Um, some people just want to know how many people went to the website, so that's why I'm just putting this here to start. This is going to expand and have many more reports, uh, both Google Analytics and, and other solutions as well, as I mentioned. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, 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 just, just an anchor tag, sure, absolutely. Not currently. So actually, uh, I'm gonna talk about the roadmap a little bit at the end here. 
one of the things I was thinking about, right now there's only, there's only like three options on the dashboard, but if I get two dozen, three dozen, four dozen things on these, uh, these analytics, you could get some pretty big dashboards. Uh, even for one user, maybe I want a dashboard that is just reporting. Maybe I want another dashboard that shows something else, uh, you know, security widgets or, or something like that. So I am looking at um, adding categories, I'm calling them, and you can decide like those could be your own categories. Right now, it'll show up for anyone, anyone that has edit mode on a page, the, the control panel will show up for them and they'll see a dashboard, yeah. But uh, that's absolutely something I should look at doing. I think uh, I'm gonna have to send everyone a survey to keep track of all these, uh, but those are great, thank you. Um, at the top here, we have the tools menu. So this is basically the tools menu in uh, 7 and 8. You can get your administrator and host pages from here. Um, so all those tools, you still have access to them. You have to dig a little bit deeper to get to them. Um, but at least, at least my experience, I'm not in things like the site wizard or page or site settings quite often. And then you have the ability to also clear module data cache uh, for the current site and for all sites. Same thing for the site map, and then you can restart the application as well. Uh, settings, so we have the analytics section here to start, and then down here, this is where you can customize it a little bit. Excuse me. Uh, if you want the dashboard to be opened, um, I also have it set up so that um, it will send me the enable experience improvement analytics. It's basically my Google Analytics in my control panel. So if that's checked off, I'll know who's using certain, not who's using screens, but what screens are being used. So the intent there is that I don't want to invest my time and my money into building something that no one goes and uses ever. Um, a lot of times I find people will talk about uh, topics and features and things like that, but then in actuality and practice, they may not actually use it as much as they thought. So um, that can be checked on or off, it's, it's optional. Yep. Yeah, you might want to consider making that clear that it's your improvement thing, not the engine. Yes, yeah, I, I, I do mention in the, uh, the, the formatting here has to change a bit by talk about uh, anonymous use of statistics sent to the developer. I'll be more specific and clear what developer that is and where it's going for sure. Uh, and then error reports as well, so the same type of thing. Um, I, I'd like to know if this control panel is breaking so I can fix it quickly for people. Um, so that's checked off. It'll send uh, only for this control panel. If there's an exception, pass it on to me as well. I think it also help if you can show people um, what you're sending. Okay. Because, you know, people. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you don't know what it's sending, then you're going to be yeah, you know, even more weary. So, yeah, absolutely, I'll put some examples in there. And this is just a quick, uh, quick way to log out. Uh, this screen's gonna expand with some more day-to-day -day type things like changing password, uh, when was your last login, so some more relevant information about users. And then help. Uh, almost every screen is help right now. This is uh, actually loaded in dynamically uh, from my server. So as we update the help documentation, this is just reaching out and pulling in the latest stuff. It does cache it locally, uh, so it's not constantly going back. Um, you can, a couple sections here you can toggle through. Uh, we're gonna have, like we have, we have more MIPS and stuff in here now still, so some of it's uh, obviously still in development, but where intent is, if people start using this, to bring videos into this help experience as well. Um, the help is playing on the theme of being contextually aware. When you click help, it's only help for the section you're on, so you don't have to go search, uh, you know, a main repository and a website for help. If I'm on the dashboard, I click the help. If I'm in files and folders and click the help, I'm just getting help for that section. Yeah, yeah, I'll show that. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll show that in just a moment. Um, the favorite screen, as I mentioned, you know, right now I've been in the extensions and the SQL screen a lot. These are your users' favorites, so this won't show up on anyone else's account but mine. Uh, and you can just quickly add the current page uh, to the list here, or you can quickly remove it as well. Uh, once again, playing on the theme of always telling people, even something as trivial as just saving or removing, just always telling people what's going on. Uh, I, th I personally, I'd rather have more information um, than, than, than less. Uh, so even though some of it may be like, uh, okay, I get it. Some people might not get it. And uh, you know, showing the 
I almost say lowest common denominator, but the people who don't use .NU don't use these websites uh, as much as we do. To get back, uh, absolutely. So if you go to this about screen here, I've got a section that talks about how you can switch back and how to get there. Um, there's a lot, from a lot of conversations I've been having, there's a lot of people that didn't really understand that the control panel is, is swappable. Uh, in the host settings screen, I think it's on the other tab, there's actually a drop down that will show you all of the installed control panels. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, there's not many out there. Uh, so there's not really been uh, much uh, need for people to go in there and change the settings. When you install this control panel, it, um, it's, it's a host setting that, that controls it, and the host, uh, host settings table. Um, I think the setting name is actually just control panel. Um, this will s basically update that to point it to my control panel on installation. Um, and then when you un if you uninstall this, it swaps it back automatically as well to the default one, uh, or you can, you, can do it, uh, you can do it manually. Um, in DNA 9, they don't give you that UI option right now. So there's no drop down. Uh, so if you do install this on DNA 9, it'll work. If you uninstall it, they'll swap it right back as well. The files and folders. So there's a lot of UI work I have to do in here still. Um, basically, as I mentioned earlier, everything's responsive. So I'm trying to build all the screens just as simple, um, mobile friendly as possible, and um, keeping a lot of the options out of it uh, from things like tree views. But right now, it just gives you a list of folders, how many files are in the folder, and the files below it. Um, and the basic settings of, you know, can I download the file, delete the file, uh, view the file properties. You can navigate through the um, hierarchy of just by clicking on the folders. And it kind of will put the name of the folder up top here and gives like a breadcrumb trail so you can get back that way. I've had mixed reviews on this. Um, there's a lot of UI polish I have to do here. But the intent is just keep it simple and only show you the files that, uh, that you really care about at that moment. The one thing that is a little different though, um, I'll show you. So we're gonna upload a file. And I'll just choose this text file here. I can put a note in. Um, okay, the file's uploaded. That's awesome, there it is. Now if I upload another file, so this is a file with the exact same name, but the contents are different. When you go to upload, it's actually going to tell you that you're not overwriting it, you're creating a new version of it. So don't worry, uh, you can always roll back to the previous one. Um, do you want to continue to upload it, yes or no? So if I say yes, okay, file is uploaded. If I go to that file's properties, up here there's a um, little version uh, icon. I can see all the versions of that file. I can go back and view them, I can delete them, or I can roll back to the previous version of the file as well. Uh, once again, this is all, everything I'm doing in this control panel is .NET new default stuff that's in the platform. It's just not exposed through the UI yet. Um, in this case, it's literally like just one, one flag being turned on on a folder, and this works. Um, this will work if people are using the DNN API in their modules. This should work by default for them. Uh, in, in if you're using this control panel. If people have implemented things in different ways, it's not going to though. Uh, but if they're using the default API for file management, it should, uh, should version them and show them the files here as well. And then on the page properties, similar to the page, or so the file properties, similar to the page properties screen, we can get a list of all the notes uh, that people may have added um, for a file. <coughs> Right now, the ability to create a folder it does work with all the uh, folder providers. So if you're using something that doesn't uh, come out of the box, it should work as well. Uh, page redirect manager, similar look right now. It's still another, uh, another bit of UI polish has to happen here. Uh, but I'm trying to be consistent between the two uh, because file hierarchy and page hierarchy, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're similar. Right? There's a, a parent and a child. Uh, so I would think the similar UI should work there. Um, so we're listing all the pages, how many child pages there are, the current URL. Uh, you can view them. Um, this UI is changing, but there's indicators here to tell you if it's the home page, if the page is disabled, if it's in the navigation. Very similar to what's in uh, the current versions. What is a little different here, though, is that though we are trying to aggregate all of the information of pages and redirects into this screen. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, if 
you have a web config redirect through the, uh, like using the URL uh, rewrite module, it'll show up in here. Um, one that I was actually, I was watching, thank you. Um, I was watching um, Ryan Moore from Southern Pride DNN did a, he sent me a link to a, a webinar he did on pages and redirects and he was talking about a section I knew about which I didn't think of when I was building this. It's the, I think it's the site, um, I forget the exact file, it's at the root of the website though. Site URL, site URL config and there's stuff in there too. Um, unless you go in there and look, you're not gonna know it exists. So I'm trying to bring all this information to one screen. And then the adding pages and redirects, just really simplifying the options. If you add a page in DNA 9, for instance, um, I think you get five, four or five uh, radio buttons that, you know, is this page a URL? Is this page a page? Is this page something else? Um, and then all the options that go along with that. Um, what I'm trying to do here is just give the, only the, 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 main, like the, the pertinent information for when you create a page, which is, you know, what name is it? Where does it exist uh, on your website? So I'm at the root right now, so the parent page is nothing. But if I went into like admin, for instance, uh, admin is there. The template and the theme, uh, theme and layout file uh, as well. All the other, other information, yeah, you may have to set it up, but not everyone has to do that all the time. So just trying to keep the real basics. And then for redirects, um, the ability to start typing in a URL. Uh, this is actually not completely plugged in yet. I had a message here. I just didn't finish, uh, finish doing it yet. So this, this panel won't work. The other one does. But the intent here is that you can start typing in the URL. And if it's a page that already exists in the site, it'll start, it'll show up and you can select it. If it doesn't, it'll create that, uh, that page redirect for you. Uh, and same thing for the destination. Uh, if you start typing it in, you can choose from the list if it already exists. And if it's a 301 or if it's a 302. This button here will let us get to the page options for this page in particular. Uh, so basically the same thing as over here. And then the help, help, exact same thing as uh, the other screens, pulling just help information in for this one section in particular. Sure. Yeah, so the main reason why is a lot of mobile applications don't use tree views at all. And um, I'm trying to build this as simple as possible on day one. So I'm kind of following some of those examples of just no tree views, simple for um, just, just you know, the information you're on. Show the information for the section you're on. Um, I'm not gonna rule out anything. As I mentioned, this is still in development. So my, my intent of, uh, of, of building this and getting it out there now is I, I want as much feedback as possible. If things aren't working, I'd, I'd like to hear. Uh, and I'd like to also you know, have some, some use cases as to why things aren't working, or you know, if you have uh, you know, um, other suggestions as well. Um, oh, wow, OK. Gotcha. It is a tree. Yep. And when it looks, you know, if it's a tree and it looks like a tree, it's much more easy for them to Abs find yeah. what's going on. Well, if they are like five steps ahead somewhere on one of the leaves, they have no idea where. Yeah. I, I get where you're going with this. So the other, the other piece of this is I'm not trying to build something that's going to account for every single type of website mm -hmm. and every user as well. Um, so there are going to absolutely be websites out there where this may not be a good option. Uh, or there might be some websites that it is. Uh, I'll absolutely uh, going to look into that because I was thinking about that too. Same with the files. Uh, I've worked on uh, web pages that have uh, websites that have over twenty thousand files. Yeah. That right. Um, so that may not be the best way to do it. This isn't going to be a bulk administration interface by any means. Um, and I'm, whether I pivot to tree view or some other type of interface, I'm never going to build this to be a bulk uh, tool that accounts for lots of super user type activities. Uh, just because they don't happen on a daily basis. Um, or if they are happening, I haven't run into it, so I'd love to, love to hear why they're happening on a, a regular basis. Um, so that, that's kind of the intent is to just keep it really simple. Yeah. Oop, there we go. So uh, on that note, we have five minutes left. Um, kind of gone through all the, the current screens. Is there any, any other questions anyone has? Or if not, we'll, we'll call, it, uh, call it a day.
sorry, add add checkbox to anonymize IPs for Google Analytics? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right now, no. Uh, but Dale, that, that that sounds like a cool option for sure. The GDRP. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, that's something I'll look into. I, I I'm from North America, and um, there's a not a whole lot of GDRP information. Uh, at least people at the people in the industry aren't talking about it uh, over and over and over again. I know some people are for sure. Uh, a lot of people I've worked with think that bits and pieces don't apply, um, which is I think false. Um, so absolutely, other things like that uh, would would make sense to put in. Um, actually, just uh, uh, five minutes left. I thought we were finished, but I have one more slide here that I forgot about. So let's we'll get to that really quickly. Um, so next steps. Uh, right now, I think I uploaded it last night um, on my website. You can download this and try it on your website. Um, I want to you know, gather feedback and feature requests like you can give me right now, so I appreciate that. Um, if it doesn't install, if it breaks your site, I'd love for you to tell me that so I can fix it. Uh, <laughs> or if you love it, I'd love for you to tell me that as well. Um, then I'm going to also be uh, updating my website over the next couple weeks and providing a public roadmap. Uh, so I have a roadmap already. Uh, it's just not on my website. It's, it's for internal purposes. So I'm going to bring as much of that information out so you guys uh, who are interested can, can see where I'm going with it and when it's coming. Um, target date, as mentioned earlier, is kind of September, October for a uh, official release of the community version of it. And uh, I plan on up to, there's, when you download from the website, there's a spot you can put your email address and uh, kind of just send a notification out for those of you who are interested that uh, you know, there's a new version of it. Um, soon, part of that notifications functionality in the dashboard, one of, one of the notification types is, hey, there's an update available. Uh, so you don't have to go hunting for it. I don't have to spam your email box uh, with, uh, with updates as well. Um, I, I do mention here the, a pro version of this. So 100% uh, transparency. I am, everything going through here today is, is free. I'm uh, building it uh, because I have tons of clients from, from, um, from my experience that, that just have a hard time using DNN. And uh, you know, there's been a lot of, um, as mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of different things that have come over the last couple of years, but there still seems to be a lot of uh, discontent with some of the options. So everything I've talked about today, I'm just giving away for free. Um, but I need to be able to uh, also, you know, um, got to live too, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. You know, there's going to be a pro version I'm looking at as well, and what that's going to include is basically more types of insights and reports from the dashboard. Uh, so if I'm talking about you know dozens upon dozens or hundreds of widgets on the dashboard or ways to scan the website, uh, that might be a way that I can add kind of some extra functionality that isn't changing uh, the, the the core stuff by any means. Um, the other piece I didn't mention here, but on that note, is that. Uh, there are solutions out there today uh, that are kind of competitors to this that when you install them, they, they take over your website. Um, I want people to have flexibility. So if you download this and put it on your site, it does, it's, not, it's not changing your website. It, uh, yes, it'll change the, the setting for the control panel, but everything behind the scenes, it's not modifying files or the core stuff. So you can install it and use it. And yes, you get file version while you're using it and what have you. If you uninstall it, all the files are still there. They still work. Nothing's breaking. Uh, so it's got that, that flexibility uh, and choice. Uh, just, yeah. just a question. Uh, in the mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mention that. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> so the persona bar is just an extension in .NET Nuke. It's a third party, basically. It's, it, I know first party built it, but it's a third party extension in .NET Nuke. And anyone can build any type of control panel and swap that out with one setting in the host file. Uh, the host file uh, control panel setting points to an ASCX file. So you, you change that, and it's going to load up that ASCX file. Uh, so the way I did it was on installation. It just changes that for you. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, the other piece, I showed the admin and host options to get those pages. Persona bar has persona bar extensions. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm actually, uh, if you're on DNN 9, instead of having that admin and host uh, option, it's going to pull in the persona bar extensions and load them inside of my control panel. Uh, so I'm basically just running them in a little container so they'll run as they normally do in the persona bar. So that way, all your thing uh, works as expected. Uh, so I'm just getting the uh, finished uh, notification up there. So uh, that's it, uh, it for now. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate you coming. And uh, thank you.
that's the uh, URL to, to get to the demo. Uh, this is an online demo if you don't want to download it. This website is walked through. There's a public uh, username and password, or you can download it. And uh, I'm sure I think Peter is sending out information afterwards to everyone. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs>